Hi, my name is Alex with Data Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about how to modify your Sprint Retrospective template in Confluence. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. But seriously, dropping a like on this video does help the channel grow tremendously, as does subscribing. Both are completely free to you, so all you got to do is smash the thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button. Also, before we jump into the video, one final announcement. I have merch, Scrum Life is a Happy Life. So if you want to support the channel, check out the link in the description below. Get a shirt, get one of many. I have different designs, get one of each. And then finally, I do have paid trainings now available. Everything you need to know is down in the description below. I got three trainings. Check them out and see which one you like and sign up for a class. All right, let's jump into the video. So today we're going to be inside of Confluence because we're going to be modifying a template. And let me just give you a very brief primer of what we're going to be discussing today. When you want to do a retrospective in Confluence, you have the option to obviously create a blank page. But I typically find that going that route is intimidating. It can be overwhelming because I'm not very creative. So Confluence, luckily for us, has a template. And let me show you what that looks like. So if I click on templates over here, and everybody that has Confluence should be able to do this, and my retrospect is already at the top. If yours is not, all you got to do is click the little search bar, type in retro, and it will go find it for you. But if you see here on the right side, this is what this template looks like. We have an overview where you take some dates, your team, your participants, and then you actually have the template for conducting the retrospective. And then finally, at the end, you have your action items. Now the retrospective section, those three columns, this is primarily what teams are going to want to modify because there's so many different ways to do a retrospective. Specifically, there's so many different prompts that you can use in a retrospective. For example, this one starts with start doing, stop doing, keep doing. I personally like what went well, what didn't go well, what can you improve? I also am a big fan favorite of what made you mad, what made you glad, what made you sad. There's a variety of different templates that you can use, different rubrics that you can use. Make sure you Google those and find out which one works for you and your team. You don't have to use the default that's in Confluence. So the purpose of this video is to walk you through how do you change that? How do you change it so that going forward, all of your templates follow the same thing? That way you avoid having to make a copy of the previous Sprints Retro over to the next one. Check this out. So this is all you got to do. Now, before we do this, though, I do want to make a disclaimer. You have to have Confluence Administrative Privilege because if you don't, you're not going to be able to do this. So make sure you go get that privilege first and then come back. So assuming you have the privilege, you're going to click on the little gear for your settings. And then on the left hand side, we're going to find this link that says Global Templates and Blueprints. Once you do that, you will come over here and these are custom. So these items up here, we, we actually have had a video where I talked to you about how to add a template. But this time we're going to be modifying an existing template. So those existing templates are global page blueprints. These are made by Atlassian. And so we're just going to come down here and find the retrospective one. Now, if you're like me, you're just going to scroll down and find it. Or you can do a control F and find the word retrospective. I'm already here. And so here we are. So we got the retrospective blueprint. You have the option to disable it if you want to for some reason. Or you're just going to click on this first one and click edit. When you click on that, it'll take you basically to that main thing. And instead of start, so we're going to click in here and we're going to type in what went well, what didn't go well, and then we're going to do what can be improved. Sometimes your what can be improved become actions. So you want to make sure that there's a clear distinction between what's an improvement that like it's like wishful, a, a desire versus like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to try to make this better. So make sure you're capturing the appropriately on your what's improved versus your action items. And so that's it. So once you basically put whatever rubric you want to put, Google this, right? There's a bunch of different ones that would be great. Personally, I'm a big fan of what made us sad, what made us glad, what made us mad. I just like how it rhymes. And if you like that kind of thing, whatever your team is used to, put it in here. And when you're done, all you got to do is click on save. Now, when you do that, now in the future, when somebody goes to templates and they type in that retrospective, you'll notice that on the right hand side here, we no longer have the start, stop, keep doing. This is what's going to be used. 
Now, one little disclaimer that I will make, if you go down this route, you are modifying the template for the entire company, everybody that uses this Confluence. So you may want to create your own team template that would go in that top section if you don't want to modify the template for everybody. So I'd let you decide which route you're going to go. But that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. That really does help the channel grow tremendously. So smash that like button and it's completely free to you. And all you got to do is hit that smash button. And if you made it this far and you're not subscribed, guess what? Subscribing also really does help the channel grow tremendously. So just make sure you take a second here, smash that subscribe button, smash that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And finally, before we close out the video, don't forget to check out the merch store, get your t-shirts, and also check out the paid courses that you can take to become even better at Jura. All right, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.